Welcome to Mastering Creating the Drop Shadow and Contour Effects in CorelDRAW. Here we will learn how to create and apply the drop shadow and contour effects to objects. Let us start by creating a drop shadow effect. A drop shadow effect is created by simulating light falling on an object from five different perspectives. Flat, right, left, bottom, and top. Drop shadows can be added to most objects, artistic text, paragraph text, as well as bitmaps. You can also add a drop shadow effect to objects that are grouped together. Drop shadows you create in CorelDRAW are ideal for printed outputs, but they are not appropriate for output devices such as vinyl cutters and plotters. For these output devices, you will need to create a drop shadow as a cuttable shadow. We will talk about that as well. To add a drop shadow, select your object. Select the drop shadow tool from the toolbox bar. Left click and hold over the center or the side of the object and drag the mouse to create the drop shadow. Release the mouse button when you have the required size for the drop shadow. After creating a drop shadow, you can change its perspective. You can also edit various attributes such as its feathering, color, opacity level, fade level, and angle. Drop shadows are created with a blur effect. The effect is to average out rapid changes in pixel intensity. Drop shadows can have a Gaussian, inside, middle, outside, or average feathering applied to the blur effect. The default setting in CorelDRAW is Gaussian. In a Gaussian blur, the pixels nearest the center of the kernel are given more weight than those farther away from the center. Drop shadows created using the Gaussian blur look more realistic. This icon up in the properties bar is for the feathering direction. Click on this black triangle to open the drop-down menu. From here, you can change your feathering choice to inside, middle, outside, or average. Play with the settings and see the difference between them. You can also change the color of the drop shadow. To do so, click to open the shadow color drop-down menu and select the color you want. The opacity of the drop shadow can be customized as well. To change the opacity of the drop shadow, move the drop shadow opacity slider to increase the opacity or decrease the opacity. At a 100% setting, the shadow is fully opaque, while a lower setting makes the shadow more transparent. Or you can simply type in the value to adjust the opacity. To change the perspective of the drop shadow, I will left click and hold on this white square and drag it to the right edge of the object. I can left click and hold on this square that matches the color of the drop shadow and move it around and place it elsewhere to create a new perspective. There are a bunch of presets that can be used as well. Click on this button to open the preset list. From here, I can choose a predefined setting to change the perspective of the drop shadow. The flat option will create a flat drop shadow. But if I choose an option from the perspective group, I will create a drop shadow that fades as it moves towards the endpoint. I can adjust the angle of the drop shadow by changing its value in the drop shadow angle field. Move the slider to position the shadow as required or I can simply type in a value to adjust the shadow angle. The stretch of the shadow can be adjusted by changing the value in the shadow stretch field. I will move the slider to the left to decrease the stretch or to the right to increase it. I could also grab this colored square and move it inwards or outwards to change the stretch. Similarly, I can adjust the fading level of the drop shadow from its start point to the end point. 
I can do this by adjusting the value in the shadow fade field. The amount of fade decreases when I reduce the value in this field. And the fading level increases when I increase the value. It is possible to copy or clone a drop shadow. With the pick tool active, select the target object. From the properties bar, click on effects. Scroll down and hover over copy effect. And from the submenu, click on drop shadow from. Then move the cursor over the source object and hover over the drop shadow and left click once. Make sure you click on the drop shadow. If you click on the source object itself, you will see a pop-up message that reads, you did not click on an object. Do you wish to try again? If that happens, click yes. Move the cursor over the drop shadow and left click once to complete the process. Similarly, you can clone the drop shadow from one object to another. To do so, select the target object and click on effects. From the drop down menu, hover over clone effect. And from the sub menu, click on drop shadow from. Once again, hover over the drop shadow of the source object and left click once. Another way to complete the step would be by using the attribute side dropper tool. From the toolbox bar, Click to select the attribute side dropper. Then make sure there are no check marks under the properties and transformations groups. Open the effects group and place a check mark next to drop shadow. And make sure there are no other check marks present. Click OK. Move your cursor over the source object and left click once. Then hover over the target object and left click once to complete the drop shadow effect. You are able to break apart an object from its drop shadow. Using the pick tool or the drop shadow tool, click on the drop shadow to select it. From the properties bar, click on object to open the drop down menu. Scroll down and click on break drop shadow group apart. The drop shadow and the object are not linked anymore. Or after selecting the drop shadow, press Control K, Command K on the Mac, to separate the object from its drop shadow. You can create a drop shadow for multiple objects that are grouped together. For that, select the group, and with the drop shadow tool active, left click and hold on the group. Drag the mouse in the intended shadow direction. When you get to the desired point, release the mouse button to complete the drop shadow. You can even use a preset from the presets list. It is possible to remove a drop shadow of a single object or a group of objects. Click on the drop shadow of the object to select it. From the properties bar, click on this icon for clear drop shadow. Or from the properties bar, click to open the drop down menu under effects. Scroll down and click on clear drop shadow. For output devices such as vinyl cutters and plotters, you will need to create a drop shadow as a cuttable shadow. To do so, select the object and click on edit from the properties bar. Scroll down and click on Duplicate. Or press Control D, Command D on the Mac to create the duplicate. From the color palette, click on a dark color to change the color of the duplicate. Adjust the position of the duplicate. Then from the properties bar, click on Object. Scroll down and hover over Order. From the submenu, click on Behind. Then click on the original object to move the duplicate behind the original object. Let us talk about contours. 
when you contour an object, you're basically creating a series of concentric lines. These lines can be heading inwards of an object or outwards. You can determine the number of contour lines as well as the distance between them. This feature allows you to create beautiful 3D effects. Select the object you wish to apply the contour effect to. From the drop shadow group, click on this icon for contour. We have three options for the type of contour effect we wish to apply. We can choose from to center, inside contour, or outside contour. For this example, I will click on this icon for outside contour to select it. Then I will place my cursor on the right side of the object, left click and hold the mouse button, and drag the mouse about an inch to the right. Release the mouse button once I get the required size. Next, I will change the contour offset value to 0.13 inches and enter a value of 25 in the contour steps field. Then I will change the outline color by selecting one from my contour palette. I will select the same color for my fill color. Because the original object that we selected had a fountain fill, we are able to set the last fill color as well. I will choose a color from my color palette. This icon in the properties bar is to set the color progression of the contour colors. The default setting is linear contour colors. I can change that setting to a clockwise progression of colors. Similarly, I can reverse it to a counterclockwise progression. You also have the option of determining the type of corners you would like for your 3D object. The default setting is mitered. This setting gives your object sharp corners. This icon is for the contour corner setting. Click on it to open the drop down menu. I will first click on bevel corners to change the corners from mitered to beveled. Next, from the Contour Corners menu, I will click on Round Corners to get rounded corners for our object. With the Contour Effects tool selected, I will click on this object to select it, then change the contour type to, to Center. You will notice that by default, Corel Draw automatically adjusted the value for the contour steps. I will change the contour offset value to 0.09 inches. Then I'll change the outline color and the fill color by selecting one from my color palette. Because our original object had a uniform fill, the option for last fill color is grayed out. I'm going to make another change to the contour offset value. I will change it to 0.05 inches. Notice the difference in the contour progression. Let's refine this a bit more by changing the contour offset value to 0.01 inches. With the object selected and the contour tool still active, I will click on this icon to change the contour type to inside contour. Then change the contour step value to 50. For the sake of further elaboration, I will change the contour step value to 8 and the contour offset value to 0.14 inches. I will change the contour corner type to bevel. Let's change the contour steps to 4 and the offset value to 0.1 inches. I will change the contour corner type to mitered. Then I will click on outside contour to change the contour effect. To better understand the contour effect settings, I will change the contour offset value to 0.14 inches and the contour corners to 
bevel corner. Next, I will change the contour steps to 16. Finally, I will change the contour corner setting to round corners. You can alter the rate at which the changes occur in the size and the color of the object's contour. This icon is for the object and color acceleration. Click on it to open the drop-down menu. As a default setting, the object size acceleration and the color acceleration are linked. Grab the slider on one of these and gently move it slightly to the right. You will see the size as well as color acceleration change with the movement of the slider. Now grab a slider and move it to the left and see the shift in the acceleration in the object size as well as its color. Next, I will click on this lock icon to unlink the two sliders. Note that now when I move the object slider, the only acceleration you see is to the size of the object. The color does not undergo any changes. Similarly, when I move the color slider, the acceleration is applied to color only. Object size remains unchanged. You can copy or clone the contour effects from one object and apply them to another. To do so, select the target object and click on Effects to open the drop-down menu. Scroll down and hover over Copy Effect. From the submenu, click on Contour From. Move your cursor over the source object and left-click once to complete the step. Similarly, to clone the contour effect, select the target object. Then click on effects to open the drop-down menu. Scroll down and hover over clone effect. From the submenu, click on contour from. Move your cursor over the source object and left click once to complete the step. You can also use the attribute side dropper to copy the contour effects from a source object and apply them to the target object. Select the attribute side dropper from the toolbox bar. From the properties bar, make certain there are no check marks next to any of the options under the properties group and the transformations group. Then open the drop down menu for effects and place a check mark next to contour. Remove all of the check marks present. Move your cursor over the source object and left click once to copy the selected attributes. Then move the cursor over the target object and left click once to apply the same. Just as you are able to break apart an object from its drop shadow, you can break apart and separate an object from its contour effect. Select the object with the contour effect. Click to open the drop down menu under object. Scroll down and click on Break Contour Group Apart. Now you can move or delete the contour effect from the original object. Let's click once on a blank spot on the canvas. Let's click and hold on the 3D object and drag it to place it elsewhere on the page. You can also press Control K, Command K on the Mac to break the contour group apart. Let's click once on a blank spot on the canvas. Left click and hold on the 3D object and drag it to place it elsewhere on the page. That brings us to the end of mastering, creating the drop shadow and contour effects in CorelDRAW. Please take your time exploring these tools. Next, we will learn about creating perspective and extrusion effects in CorelDRAW. To learn about creating the perspective and extrusion effects, please access the tutorial on Mastering, Creating the Perspective and Extrusion Effects in CorelDRAW, or click on the link provided below in the description of this video. To access the previously published tutorials, please click on the respective links provided in the description of this video.